In this module, we'll cover the normal approach and landing in the Piper Warrior. The maneuver will begin midfield downwind for runway 27 at Platka Municipal Airport, which is non-towered. In addition to reviewing target airspeeds, power settings, and configurations, we'll also take a look at the stabilized approach criteria and after landing checklist. One of the most important takeaways from this lesson is the concept of a stabilized approach. Unstabilized approaches continue to play a major role in landing accidents, and the FAA wants pilots to become better informed on the matter. The case study presented here is one of hundreds that fill the uh, NTSB files. The story is disappointingly familiar. A pilot tries to save a faulty approach and land the airplane instead of rejecting the landing and trying again. The outcome is predictable. No matter what type of airplane you fly, from a Cessna 150 to a 747, the importance of understanding stabilized approaches and remaining disciplined in your decision making is essential to safety. Okay, let's talk a little about the normal approach and landing profile and how we define a stabilized approach. Then we'll hop in the airplane and see an example of the maneuver start to finish. The preparation for the approach actually begins well away from the airport. About 10 miles prior to reaching the airport, the pilot should have completed the before landing checklist down to the line and conducted a thorough brief of the approach. This topic will be covered in a separate module, and we'll assume it's been done for the purpose of what we are doing here today. When nearing the airport, the aircraft should be slowed to between 95 and 100 knots. A power setting of 2200 to 2300 RPM should be a good starting value, with adjustments made from there as necessary to achieve the desired target speed. The initial segment of the normal approach generally begins on the downwind leg when the aircraft is a beam the landing threshold. A beam means the wingtip aligns with the start of the landing runway. However, if the downwind needs to be extended for any reason, such as traffic, then the start of the approach must be delayed until the appropriate time. For our scenario, we will assume we are number one for landing with no traffic ahead of us. The first step is to reduce the power slowly and smoothly to 1600 RPM and pitch the nose slightly up to maintain altitude. In doing so, the aircraft will be allowed to decelerate. After verifying verbally that the airspeed is below VFE, which is the maximum flap extended speed of 103 knots, flaps are extended to 10 degrees. A noticeable pitch up will be felt as the flaps are deployed, so be prepared to apply nose down inputs. Of course, retrim is necessary. As the airspeed slows to 80 knots, establish a descent to maintain 80 knots and continue along the downwind to a point that is 45 degrees from the landing threshold. The turn to the base leg is initiated when the aircraft is approximately 45 degrees from the landing threshold. At a non-towered airport, a radio call should be made announcing the aircraft's position. One very common error I see is pilots allowing the nose to pitch up in the turn from the downwind to the base leg, resulting in a loss of airspeed. It is important to maintain the descent attitude throughout the turn by using outside visual cues. Also, remember to apply proper wind correction angle on the base leg so that the aircraft's track remains 90 degrees to the landing runway. When established on the base leg, the flap should be extended to 25 degrees with a target airspeed of 70 to 75 knots. Before turning on to final, the pilot should check that the approach area is clear of any traffic. It is not uncommon for other aircraft to be flying straight in approaches. Once the aircraft is turned onto the final approach segment and within gliding distance of the airport, flaps can be extended to 40 degrees if desired. The aircraft should then be slowed to the proper approach speed known as V-REF or reference speed and the heading adjusted for wind so that the aircraft's track remains aligned with the runway centerline throughout the final approach. When the aircraft reaches 200 feet above the ground, the pilot must confirm that the approach is stabilized. If so, he or she must state 200 feet, approach stable, landing. If any stabilized approach criteria has not been met at 200 feet above the ground, the pilot must execute a go around. The call out would be 200 feet, approach unstable, going around. Let's now take a closer look at each element of a stabilized approach.
An approach is considered to be stabilized if all of the following conditions have been met by 200 feet above ground level. Number one, the aircraft is properly positioned for landing and requires no unusual maneuvering or large corrections to continue to the intended touchdown point. This means essentially that the airplane is on the proper glide path and aligned with the extended runway centerline. Number two, the approach speed or VREF is within plus 10 knots and minus 5 knots of the target reference speed. Number three, the airplane is properly configured for landing. And number four, the before landing checklist has been completed in its entirety. If any of the criteria is not met by 200 feet AGL, a go around must be initiated. Okay, that completes the uh, review of the normal approach and landing procedure. Let's now jump into the aircraft and see what it looks like from the air. We will uh, start this maneuver midfield left downwind runway 27 at Plaque uh, Airport. Palaka traffic, Cherokee's midfield left downwind runway 27, full stop Palaka. Okay, we're beaming the numbers right now. And we'll pull our power back 1600, keep the nose up. Sorry, to VF. We're within VFE, flaps 10 degrees. We're looking for 80 knots. And we'll begin our descent at 80 knots. Wait for the uh, runway to be at our 45. Like traffic, white skyhawk, um, left downwind, left crosswind, like traffic. Palaka traffic, Cherokee turning left base, runway 27, full stop, Palaka. Yeah, we're descending at 80 knots. Okay, established on the base leg right now, left base, runway 27, we'll flaps 25, and we want to slow the aircraft to between 70 and 75 knots. Like a traffic white skyhawk, um, leaving the pattern going southbound. Last call. Like a traffic. Like a traffic, Cherokee's turning final, runway 27, full stop, Palaka. We're turning final approach. Light right crosswind, so we'll stop our turn just a little bit early, track runway center line. Okay, and we'll settle up with full flaps and a rough speed of 62. A few hundred feet, we're stabilized. Landing. Jump one on course. Traffic not available. Okay, let me jump one, steer left. Get steer reducing left. the power to idle. On course. And a little bit of right aileron, left rudder, and we'll touch down right wheel and full aileron into the wind. Block of traffic, helicopter 750 in Lima is going to be air taxiing taxiway alpha from Air Florida to the Air Florida hangar. Block of. Jump one with one jumper, stand by. Once the aircraft is clear of the runway and across the runway hold short markings, it should be brought to a complete stop and the after landing flow performed. The after landing flow is identical to the before takeoff flow. Uh, Number one, the flaps are retracted and visually verified. Number two, the carburetor heat is ensured to be in the off position. Number three, the mixture is leaned to avoid spark plug fouling. 
Number four is your electric fuel pump off, pressure checked. And for daylight operations, landing lights off and wingtip strobe lights off. Um, and then the last item to check is the status of the transponder. Okay, that completes the presentation on the normal approach and landing in the Piper Warrior. As always, if you have any uh, questions or comments, please leave them in the section below the video.